All right, yeah, it was uh, UPS. I got a package, so she was just letting the UPS guy know that uh, she lives here. All right, so let's see. I was uh, kind of applying this lighter uh, to this road here. All right, that's pretty good. I mean, we're gonna let's get the rest of the uh, painting in, rest of this foliage, and we might have to adjust this a little bit, but um, looks pretty good for like that, right, right where it is. All right, so let's put these back over here. Guys, appreciate all your comments. Um, I'm getting a lot more views and stuff, so that's exciting. Um, that feedback that you guys give me when you guys comment, that's helpful for me because it tells me how interested people might be in watching these videos. If I get more interest and I tend to, inspires me to do more videos, right? All right, so thank you for all you who are watching, who subscribed, your comments, they're really helpful for me and I appreciate it. I'm gonna take this stump and kind of just go over this beige I put down, let's go ahead and flip it so I can work on the edge. Let's kind of cover it up a little bit better. And uh, knowing that we're gonna put a lot more color down here. Okay. We get an indication where the tire marks are in the road. Right. All right, let's start to fill in some of this foliage here. Kind of working, so I'm kind of working from the back and then I kind of move towards the front. Um, and uh, so let's, we're gonna try to move forward here. So I'm gonna kind of go over this gray here a little bit more with the, um, or this full, uh, the distant trees with this gray. Kind of over that, um, that blue I had laid down earlier. Right. Kind of gray, let's bring some more of that um that blue and kind of intertwine these two together. These are good to do. You take that blue, you put it down, you take a little gray, you kind of tone it a little bit with the gray and then you can take a stump like this and then you can really kind of blend these two together to kind of get that perfect distant value here where it's not too gray but has a little bit of that blue into it. All right, remember distant trees tend to kind of lean to the blue, right? Kind of blue, gray, like distant mountains. Anything in the distant is, uh, is gonna be kind of blued out. So I like this, this lavender ultramarine for that purpose. <clears throat> and you just add a little bit more color and blend it around a little bit more. Nice, starting to stack the color up a little bit. All right, now let's look at the picture again. And let's see if we can bring a little bit more definition with adding some brighter greens as we see here with some of these distant little trees here. And we got a little bit of an orange back in there too. So let's bring a little bit brighter green. The question is, which green am I going to use? I could start off with a subtle one and kind of get stronger. So let's just start with this and see what this looks like. This is a uh, Van Gogh. There's the color of it. All right, and there's a tree right here. And it kind of comes like that. 
I'm gonna have to go brighter than what I'm using here, but this will start me off. Kind of comes like this, kind of shaped like a typical cone, I guess. All right, and over here we have one. You can kind of see the top of that one over here. Okay. And then on this side here we have this trees. comes up like this. So this is a good green. This is a nice base. We'll go bring some brighter greens on top. Okay. And let's blend that around. Circular blend using the side of the stump here like this. I could do this with my thumbs, my fingers, but I don't wanna to have to clean up my fingers after every time I blend. So that's why I'm good to bring in the stump here to help you do that. There's that grain, it was really strong. You can see that cut through that line there. Let's see if I can um, try to cover as much as that. All right, a little bit of lighter blending on this one. I don't want that green to go away. If I blend too much, it'll fade out. dark value. I need a dark value. I'm going to use this Prussian blue to start off with. I need to indicate some um, like branches kind of that you can kind of see. You can kind of see them in the picture. These little dark branches here that kind of branch out through the tree. Just using the edge of the, the Prussian blue here and kind of make indication of uh, branches. And then we're going to take the stump here and kind of push that in. And we might bring it darker than that. And I probably will as I go through it. Probably going to have to go darker here. But for right now, that, that'll work. Okay. Now let's bring in the lighter, lighter green. Um, I think I'm going to go with this one. It's got a little bit of yellow in it. And I'm also going to bring in an orange or like an ochre. All right. So let's start, try uh, what this looks like here. All right. You can see I can just hold it like this and then just really ap apply it pressure here is right at the edge of this and really just drop the color like that. Um, for me anyways, I feel I have the most control of where I place the color by handling it this way. Um, you can also go like that. Um, I tend to like to hold the stick like this. Okay, we can just highlight the edge of that. Okay. Don't want 
want the whole tree to be this color because it's a really strong green. Um, so I'm kind of using it as a highlight. I kind of let the light kind of filters and hits the top of that there for us. All right, now let's bring in a little bit of ochre. So I brought this one, but I, looking at the picture here, I think I want something that has a little bit more red, more of a deeper red. So maybe like one of these guys. This is a uh, Neo Pastel. There's the color of it right there. And I'm gonna put in a little bit right into this tree here where I see a little red. I can definitely see a little bit of that there. Okay. Come over here. And then maybe we'll put even some of this ochre on it. So distant fall trees, very subtle on the colors. All right, take a stump here and just kind of rub that around. Very loose, so I'm not putting a lot of pressure, more or less just kind of letting the color just kind of very softly kind of blend into each other. All right, it's very soft blending. The more pressure you put in, you know, the more it'll change. So this is a very, just very delicate. Take a look at it, pretty good. All right, maybe it's a little stronger on the edges. Let's take a little bit of a different, so I, I did like this one, but I'm gonna go a different shade of red. This one's just a little bit more of a, uh, got a little bit more brown in it actually, so it's, reminds me of rust. I call it rust. You can see the two reds here. So, okay, so let's take this one and let's use this one now and to see what that looks like. It's gonna be a little bit stronger This is also a Neo Pastel, so it's very, it's softer. So a lot more color comes off the stick. All right, we're just pretending we're making distant fall trees. All right, a little bit of highlight on the tip of those. Kind of smear it around, right? Changes the value of the color when you do that. So it kind of blends in a little bit more realistically. And there we go, just a little bit more of this green. Now we're gonna put another tree that's gonna cut through all this. So a lot of this is gonna get covered up, but um, I work in layers. So I kind of, you know, just I'll create a whole scene and I'll go over it with some tree and kind of cover everything up. And that's just the way I do it. That's the way my mind thinks, I guess. And bring some of that blue down. Remember this ultramarine blue and then the fall colors really, really go hand in hand. They really do complement each other and they must go together. 
a little bit of gray to kind of tone that blue down a little so it's not so blue and then you can mix it in and you get a nice faded value out of that okay Let's take a look at that. That's pretty good. Now let's go over to this side here. And do I want to use the same green that I did over here? I might change it slightly. Um, let's just see what this one does. Can I bring in a little bit over here? in here now this green here was this one okay now I'm using this one on this side here all right we're just gonna bring a little bit of more color there Notice I'm just kind of smearing it and I kind of tap and I kind of just smear it and kind of leaving some of that dark color, you know, the, 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 the base color in there. And on the edges might get a little bit more detailed with it. So the strong, the color is stronger here. Um, at the edge of the tree where it meets the sky and then I kind of a little bit more loose with it as I head back into the painting all right I'm going to take a stump here and I'm going to take a little bit more of this green and kind of put a little bit more down in here I think I'm going to kind of come in further in Be something like that. Take a stump and rub that around. Notice that the, the direction I'm going with the field is very flat, horizontal. Where in the trees, I'm doing more of a circular uh, blend. Fields and water and things that need to lay flat, I tend to just blend them that way too because the strokes do show up and the strokes, the direction of the strokes do give you an indication of the, the lay of the land and how, you know, the geography sits. Okay, so in here, it's more of a soft circular type of blend. I'm not gonna do the edges so much. I'm kind of going more towards the interior of the tree. And use it point of the stump to really push into the different crevices of the cork and try to get some more color deposit down in there. All right, so you can kind of use the edge of that, the pointed part of the stump to kind of get that, to help you do that. Otherwise, it's gonna be more of a blend like that. So easy the, the way the color just moves on the cork, how it just spreads around. It's so easy to do. And then, you know, it fades away, then I feel I can just keep adding more and more color to it. So I'm kind of working this section here really good. Let's kind of bring in um, 
this ochre right here, I can kind of see the way the land comes up, kind of comes up like this. This is a Mungio gallery, just a medium ochre. Good stick to have, it's got a lot of uses. Let's bring it some into this road too. Kind of tone the road to a little bit more what it really is. I'm starting to get hungry. Probably should have ate before I started my uh, video. But we'll just take a break here shortly. Get some food. All right, bring in some of that ochre. I don't know, the way that the land slopes, it slopes. So my marks, this is more of a mental thing than anything else. What I'm, what I'm telling myself is that the land slopes here because I look at the picture and I can definitely see there's a slope. And so by marking it that way, it's almost like a psychological reinforcement for me to keep remembering the lands, to how the landscape looks. So obviously when I rub this out, you're not gonna be able to tell, but that's what I'm, um, that's why I do it like that. So this red here, notice we got some red from the, from the uh, fallen leaves, right? Um, comes up like this. I'm gonna move uh, this stuff over. Things start to stack up on me. And I'm trying to move a lot slower so it's not so shaky on the video. Hopefully I can keep reminding myself to do that. <laughs> okay, let's bring in that ochre and then we're gonna bring in a brown and maybe like a chocolate gray color brown. I bring those in together. Um, this is a Crepaz Expressionist, so we'll bring that in there. And then my mixed stump here. And so let's kind of blend these ochres down and let's see what it looks like when I blend it. Brings in a lot of that blue, which is fine. No problem with that. Still can see the ochre there, which is good. All right. Just lay a little color down and then move it. All right, let's keep going. A little bit more color. <clears throat> and a little bit of brown. To find the edge of that road here with this brown. A little bit of blend right there. Fade that ochre down there a little bit more. A, little, a lot easier to do it when it's uh, get down to the bottom there. And when I flip it like this, it's just easier for me to get the color down. Just looking at it sideways is kind of different. <laughs>
right, smear that around again. Good ways. It's coming along, right? It's starting to really take shape. All right, let's kind of bring a little bit more of that green. I think it was, was it this one? Keep track of the greens I use. I think it was this one. So it's gonna come down a little bit more. There's this tree here. I'm gonna put in a couple dark trunks here to kind of define it a little bit better. Oh, is that her again? Yep, that's my dog. Somebody's out there, all right. There's these dark trunks here that you can see that kind of lean out. Oop, broke, a little piece broke. And there's another one. It's a UPS guy that's out there again, or Amazon. She always barks when they come right to the door. All right, some distant tree action back in there. All right, and then bring this green and kind of go over some of it. So it kind of hides some of the trunks. Most of it's going to be towards the edge here, where it meets the back part of that painting. That's most of that green is going to come in right there. Okay, just kind of dab that in here and there, certain spots. Come over part of that trunk again. All right. All right. All right, guys, I'm gonna take a quick break. I'm gonna get a little bit bite to eat. I'm gonna go get that package off my front porch. So I'll be back here shortly. <laughs> 